I see myself in a cave under the earth, mm -hmm. underground cave. Describe this cave for me. What does it look like? Look around you. Can you see in this cave? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can stand in it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like oval. Oval. And it's rock. It's rock that have shapes of, of roundness, like it's carved roundness. Mm -hmm. It's like how coral is um, porous and has indentations. Mm -hmm. It's like coral, but it's not coral. It's dark. It's darker than coral. It's like a dark gray mm -hmm. stone that has that same kind of texture as coral. It's like porous. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else besides the stone in this cave? Look around. There's uh, wetness. Mm -hmm. There's water. There's, the, there's a wetness to them, mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And as you observe this cave, <clears throat> do you feel that you have a physical body in this cave? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'd like for you to... Male. Yeah, male. Very good. Tell me more. I sense uh, peace and aggression. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. In the male body that I am it's there's a the personality is peaceful and aggressive mm -hmm. and as you look at this body what does it look like feel it I want to say shape-shifting mm -hmm. it has to be has the ability to be like, well, I see, um, like a thick skin, mm -hmm. scaly, thick skin, bluish, like a fish, mm -hmm. but or a snake, like that kind of fishy, snaky skin, and it's blue. Mm -hmm. And while you're in this cave, are you standing or sitting or lying? How? What position is this body in? Standing. Mm -hmm. So look down and see what you're standing on. The rock. Mm -hmm. I'm inside the cave. It's all the same inside the cave, and mm -hmm. there's a light source. Hmm. Where is this light source coming from? <sighs> the center of this cave. It's my little house is the cave. Mm -hmm. I live in the cave. All right. So I'd like for you to take me into this cave and let's see what's there. Nothing. It's just there and there's a light source, mm -hmm. um, a column of light. Let's find out where this column of light comes from. Follow it, please. It's to my right, so I'm walking. It's a communication device. It's a, uh, I don't want to say entertainment device, but it's it's communication device. Mm -hmm. It's a column. It's also flat. It can also shape shift. Oh. Uh, it's also food. The food is the light is the food that I eat. 
Where is this light coming from? Oh, it's it... self-generating. So it's within the cave? Yeah. Okay. It's in the center of the cave. It's like the center of the donut. Like the cave is like a round donut, and mm -hmm. the center of it is the light source. It's like right. the battery of it or you know, the generator of it. Are you alone in this cave? Right now I am. Mm -hmm. So let's find out a little bit more about your life. I'd like for you to close this scene and now let's go to another scene in that same lifetime where there's more information about your life. We fly. See it. We fly. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what does it look like when you fly? <laughs> We have little wings. Mm. They look very small compared to the size of the body. <clears throat> They're on the neck. Mm -hmm. They used to be gills, but they turned into wings. Hmm. Now you said we. Are there others around you? It's a civilization. <sighs> How many do you see? Lots. Lots. Like beehive civilization. Yes. Another planet. We're very uh, peaceful, but we can be very aggressive, like bees. Mm -hmm. If you leave us alone, we won't. If you don't steal from us and you leave us alone and you don't try to mess with us, we're very peaceful. And what kind, what size are you? Are you large or small? Well, we're larger than bees and we're larger than humans. Mm hmm But the wings are so small and they come from the neck. Hmm. But they're strong enough to sustain some kind of levitation flight thing. Okay. Now, do you see around you anything else besides others like you? It's around. dark. Mm -hmm. It's it's we're inside of a planet, so okay. there's no external atmosphere. Okay. So everything is dark and has that color of like charcoal that looks like coral. Mm -hmm. And it's luminescent. The the water part of it is very important. The rock has to stay hydrated. Why is that? Or we all die. Hmm. Tell me more about that. How does that work? The water's connected to the light sources that we, that is our food. Mm -hmm. The water is love. It's how we feel love mm -hmm. and how we feel connected to each other and how we communicate to each other and, and how we, we maintain our oneness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our, our tribal energy. And when you fly with all of these, are you doing it for any particular reason? Are you moving in any particular place? There's work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's like we're on guard. We're like on, uh, we're protecting something mm -hmm. that means a lot to us. Let's find out what that is. It's the water. Mm -hmm. What's happened to the water? It was stolen. Who stole the water? Bacteria. Hmm. It came in as bacteria. It wasn't bacteria, but mm -hmm. it came in as bacteria. Mm -hmm. It tricked us into thinking it was bacteria. Mm -hmm. Where did this bacteria come from? I see a bottom of a ship that looks like a moving propeller, very metallic. Mm -hmm. 
Where the, is this ship? Is it within your cave? No, it's outside. Mm -hmm. It's outside the planet. Okay. And the only way it could come into the planet was to make itself into bacteria. Mm -hmm. And it seeped in. And are you accepting of bacteria? Normally, yes. Mm -hmm. So what happened? It wasn't bacteria. Did it morph into something else? <sighs> it was like a magic trick. Mm. As soon as the make-believe bacteria touched the inside of the planet and accessed the main water portal, it was like a magic trick. And it just disappeared mm -hmm. so you have no water left on your planet very little that's why it's important that we keep the water the rock inside has to stay moist mm -hmm. but it was our friend the water was our friend mm -hmm. and it was taken from you what was the purpose of taking this water they don't have their own water. Mm -hmm. But they use water for incubation because the water was so rich. Mm -hmm. And I'm psychically in part of their ship. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happens within their ship. Within their ship. Mm hmm not our ship. Yes, what happens within their ship? Oh, they are, they are using our water against our will to create their life. Mm -hmm. In what in Earth we call, people on Earth call test tubes. Mm -hmm. So they use our water to fill up their very large tubes that they have in their laboratories on their ships. What's in these tubes? Different experiments. Mm -hmm. And being that this water is love, does that affect you? That it was stolen mm -hmm. and misused? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we can feel what the water is being put through. Mm -hmm. What do you feel inside? <sighs> Extreme anger. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to close that scene. Close that scene and let's see what happens next. Move on to the next important scene. Where are you? We're walking down a path we, it's a congregation, mm -hmm. like a meeting. Yes. And we're all walking kind of like on, a, on the red carpet, mm -hmm. but it's uh, not for that. It's where it's, we're, they're, we're creating lines and lines and lines. We're, cre we're creating formation. And um, we're planning something. Mm hmm where is it that you're going to? <sighs> the ship. Mm -hmm. Where is the ship? In outer space. Mm -hmm. Is this your ship? No, we're going to that ship that mm -hmm. stole our water. So 
So all of you are going there now? A lot of us. Mm -hmm. What happens next? Well, when we create a formation, we turn into something else. All right. It's when we go to war. So tell me what happens when you form this. What do you turn into? One being. Mm -hmm. A flying being. Mm -hmm. An orb. Describe what you look like. We look like a dark spider web that can't be broken. Mm -hmm. Very uh, well designed. very well designed, masterly designed web mm -hmm. that we are, that our bodies create as we come into formation and our nervous systems link in and we become one nervous system, one pulse. And our intention is to go to the ship and pulse it. So allow yourself to see that now. We know that the ship is stronger than us, but we're communicating to them. We're pulsing and we're interfering with their electromagnetic frequency. Mm -hmm. Because they have something that doesn't belong to them. Mm -hmm. and they're using it wrongly. Mm -hmm. And we aggravate them. Do they understand yes. what's happening to them? Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this. What happens? Where we become like a nuisance. Mm -hmm. This has been going on for a very, very long time. They're trapped. They can't get away from us. They can't leave for some reason. Mm -hmm. They're not able to leave. Like being trapped in a spider web? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it that your frequencies have trapped them? I think so. Mm -hmm. Something about what they've done allowed them to be trapped so they can't escape. Mm -hmm. They won't surrender the water and they can keep doing their laboratory experiments and we can keep aggressing them and irritating their frequency. So let's see what happens. What happens next? It goes on for a long time, this back and forth. Then mm -hmm. we, we get, you know, tired or We've done our pulse, and then we come back, and, and we come back into our planet and back underneath the ground where we can touch the w remaining water that is on the rocks inside the caves. Mm -hmm. And we, we love each other. There's a... We recharge we mm -hmm. recharge each other and yeah. then we get ready to go back up and pulse them again mm -hmm. this is what we do there is a spirit in the water there's a uh, soul or spirit or there's there's something it's not just water it's a <sighs> That's why they're trapped. We, as long as they don't return the water, they're not free to leave. Mm -hmm. Now, this soul or spirit, does it reside in both the ship and in the remaining water? Or do they have it trapped? No, it remains in the remaining water that's on the surface of okay. the rocks. Mm -hmm. So we keep in contact. We keep speaking Very to good. it. Very good. And it can keep speaking to us.
So let's close this scene mm. and now move forward to the conclusion of what has happened with this water. <clears throat> what happens? It feels like it has it goes on for eternity. It's still happening. All right. So I'd like for you to disconnect from that lifetime completely. And as you look at that lifetime, let's find out how that lifetime is affecting the lifetime of Magli. What is she picking up? That water has something to do with souls on earth. Mm -hmm. Let's go deeper and deeper and find out what that means. We were the protectors of that water because that water brought souls. It's like the life of souls, the birthing of souls. Mm -hmm. We were their protector. The souls on earth, the source of the souls on earth is from that water. Mm -hmm. And because it's being mishandled and not free, not appreciated, not loved, it's being manipulated, it's being disturbed and It has this um, different color to it. it it's, it's, its frequency, its essence is being changed because of how it's being used. And that has a direct effect on the pain that souls on earth feel. Mm -hmm. So let's specifically look at the soul. Magli, how is that affecting her? Deeply. Mm -hmm. It is the equivalent of the embryonic liquids while the human fetus is in the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. It's cosmic embryonic fluid. Mm -hmm that gives life to souls that are supposed to be free. Yes. <sighs> Same thing that's happening on this earth with the water. Mm -hmm. The oceans are being destroyed with toxins. Now, as, as above, so below, does this have anything to do with that? Yes. What are they doing on that ship to that water that is reflecting down to Earth? <sighs> genetic modification of souls, genetic modification of humans. Mm -hmm. If you can genetically modify a human, you can genetically modify a soul. And as we tap into that in information, 
How is it that that's affecting her life? Why is it blocking her? Let's find out. I'm going to go ahead and count from three back to one. When I get to number one, we're going to go even deeper into this matter to find out the block that has been placed in this woman's life. Three, mm -hmm. going back in time now, through time and space, looking for the blockage. Two and one. See it in your mind's eye. Tell me about this. They're mad at me. Mm -hmm. Describe who they are. <sighs> the beings that are in that ship that are also in this world. Mm -hmm. The ones we go hum to, the ones we go interfere, their pattern. And when when we emanate and when we come into our grid and we come into our organic web and we they're mad because we have we have locked them in mm. they're stuck let's find out where they're stuck describe it for me Do you see? I see the I see the ship and the planet. Mm -hmm. How they, far away is the ship from the planet? Not that far. Mm -hmm. Who's on that ship? Draconians. Mm -hmm. And the Earth is the the planet that I live in. The stone planet the caves is also earth mm -hmm. they're superimposed they're parallel they're they're the same they're different but they're the same mm -hmm. and as long as they don't relinquish the water because you see the water needs to be inside of the stones to heal back by back to its original form from what they've done to it mm -hmm. And they're on lockdown because we will not release them until they bring back the water. So it's a tug of war, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now we understand your reason why you have kept them locked in. What are they doing back? What are they doing to this earth? They're trying to destroy it. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? Spite and mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. To kill us so that we cease to exist. Mm -hmm. Which will never happen. Mm -hmm. Which they know. So why is it that she is feeling this block? What does this block consist of? She's she's a bit of a uh, daredevil herself. Uh -huh. She's not going to go down softly. Mm -hmm. She puts up a really good fight. She's not afraid of it. She's been quite a troublemaker for them. Mm -hmm. And so they, they've they tagged her. Mm -hmm. How have they tagged her? 
when she was incarnating. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's been tagged for lifetimes mm -hmm. throughout dimensions. They fuck with her. Mm -hmm. How are they tagging her? Is it energetic or physical? It's energetic until she finds a mate, then they use the mate. How do they use the mate? They infiltrate his mind. Mm -hmm. And turn the mate against her mm -hmm. at the most vulnerable time. Is that why she's had situations in her life like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. She's known for a while, but she was trying to work through it. <laughs> mm -hmm. She doesn't give up easily. So is there anything that you can really work through it now that she understands that this is not the maid at all that's doing it? She's known this for years. Okay. Um... She has recently come to peace with the reality that it is quite possible that she's not to have a mate. Mm -hmm. And this used to terrify her. But she has recently come to a very soft acceptance of this. Mm -hmm. And this acceptance that she has, is that helpful in, in surviving this? Yes. Mm -hmm. And in not, in this lifetime, bearing a child. Mm -hmm. Would they have done the same thing to the child? Yes. Turn the child against her? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So she actually knows to keep away from that so that they cannot access her mind that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or her heart. So we now know that she is not being uh, used by a mate at this time. But why is it that everything has kind of disappeared from her life? She is touching into an energy she had when she was 12, okay. before she reached or started puberty. Mm -hmm. Would you tell me about this? It is uh, us. Mm -hmm. There is something very beautiful about human sexuality. Mm -hmm. And there is something very distorted about human sexuality. Before puberty hits, there is a energy that at least she had that was directly connected to us. Mm -hmm. Is this a pure energy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Love? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Is this the innocence of a child? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what happens? It's the innocence of an extremely intelligent child. Okay. Who is connected off planet mm -hmm. and knows it. What happens with the sexuality? Demons come in. Mm. Not always, but it's one of their main doorways. Is it that a child needs to be having sex or is it just the puberty, the hormone changes? No, a child does not need to be having sex. Mm -hmm. But part of development is through puberty. Mm -hmm. And when that human being grows into puberty and begins having sex, a sexual life, mm -hmm. there is not enough care or understanding of what happens interdimensionally when there is uh, human sexual involvement without the proper spiritual protection. 
Can you explain to me how that happens? Yes. The electromagnetic field is not yet secure enough. There might be, let's call them impurities mm -hmm. or addictive serotonin uh, limbic brain activity. Mm -hmm that the person in the act of sex while the spiritual containment has not yet been developed by the individual there is a seeping in there's a weakness mm -hmm. in the limbic brain and it creates an addiction and an endocrine addiction and this is one way that uh, demons or archons or dracos, anybody that wants to come in and cohabitate on earth will do that through using a what do they call that? The uh, Host. Mm -hmm. So does this happen often with adolescents? Absolutely. Is that why sometimes when you have a child and their personality changes after puberty, it's that they're being used? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how can we protect our children from this? How do we make them aware? Love them more. Mm. Love them organically. Let them experience an organic childhood. Away from the movie industry, the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. the music industry, the technological industry. And what they are doing now is putting on those virtual goggles on their physical heads. What, Not good. What happens when a child puts on those virtual goggles? The pineal gland gets hijacked. Hmm. There is a you see, as we over there create our net and pulse their spaceship so that they release the water, mm -hmm. they pulse Earth with technology to steal the essence in the pineal gland. Does that essence from the pineal gland make them stronger? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it do to those who have been robbed of that essence? Something from them has been stolen that they never even knew existed. The same as the water. Yes, exactly. Once it's been stolen, can it be, be reactivated? Once it is stolen, it is used mm -hmm. to, like, no offense, but people that get injections of Botox, mm -hmm. they get an injection of pineal juice. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's being stolen from. That's where it's going to. Mm -hmm. It gives them a juice, a high. Mm -hmm. It's like heroin. Mm -hmm. It's vampiristic. 
But the pineal gland is something that is within the human body. I know the human body is constantly regenerating cells every day. Can a human regenerate that pineal gland essence? I can, yes. Mm -hmm. How would one do that once it's been stolen? Lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Can you give me examples of that lifestyle change? Huh. Go back to pre puberty. Hmm. Go back to the innocence of the child that is love mm -hmm. and live your life from there. Without the doubts, without the judgment, without the hatred? Without the confusion, without the sense of being lost, mm -hmm. without the feeling of needing to accomplish, without the rat race. Mm -hmm. So one of her questions is that she doesn't feel like she has any goals anymore. Has something been done to put her into that state once again? Yes. Oh. So it's really not a problem. Why has she's she been being protected? Okay. We can we go further into that? What is she being protected from? pain mm -hmm. she's been through a lot and this might be the first time in her life her human life where she's not emotionally suffering mm -hmm. you see her human desires were made her an easy target. Mm -hmm. She doesn't always give herself credit for what she does and the influence, the positive influence she has had. We activated her when she was 19 years old. How did you activate her? We helped her remember. Mm -hmm. It was a traumatic time for her. We knew that it would be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But she asked for this. Is this when you pulled her out of her body and took her to the ship? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the nucleus of, of the experiences and the energy. Mm -hmm. We wanted her to know without a doubt that everything she experiences is real. Mm -hmm. And we wanted her to know that there is an incredible network of light and love that is still generated. She was part of our tribe. She used to come into formation with us. She still does. Mm -hmm. When she sleeps? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a uh, warrior, and for a very, very long time, she has been part of the formation that we create to go pulse the ship. Mm. Is that why she says she always feels amphibian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of a being is it that she is? She's a male. Mm -hmm. Blue... It's that blue-skinned, 
It's like it's like a blue snake mm -hmm. that feels ooh, glissery but strong and it's large scales that are blue mm. and they emanate light. So when she's in that cave, mm. they generate their own light? Along with the tower. Mm -hmm. Is she emanating some of that life in her human form? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is that what people feel from her? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It intimidates a lot of people. Yes. They don't understand it. And when she's emanating this light, is it coming out as the peaceful energy or the warrior? Both. Mm. So they feel a conflicting energy? We don't feel it as a conflict. Mm. We're not afraid of unifying the two. So when she meets a person, she's peaceful, but they have to be careful that they don't steal from her. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or from others. Mm -hmm. They don't steal, period, from anyone. Mm -hmm. Not just from her. From her. <sighs> it's beyond her. So you have put her into a different mode now. She says, right now, well, she did feel much stronger when she was in her 20s. Hmm. And that's when she was... We were inside of her. Mm -hmm. And what happened now? She says she feels so naive as a human. We've stepped outside of her. Oh, okay. Because when we're inside of her, we will draw to her opponents. Mm-hmm. It's the relationship we have to the ship. Okay. So when we are in her body and, and living with her, the opponents that are on planet Earth, that are inside other people, mm -hmm. come to her. And this is fine as a teaching tool and a lesson and for healing, but she's tired. Mm -hmm. Well, she feels sometimes that she's going to just disappear. Mm. <clears throat> she could. What is the what is that feeling caused by? Her shape shifting abilities. Mm -hmm. That one moment she's here, and another she's not. In her physical life, yes. Okay. She's a shape shifter on Earth. How does she shape shift on Earth? That's why she lives alone. Hmm. Because when nobody's watching, she can be different things mm -hmm. she's free to the amphibians are shapeshifters that's how they love that's how they express themselves that's how they create they become different things that's they make that's how they make love to themselves they they shapeshift into different things mm -hmm. it's very exhilarating it's very intimate it's very scary for people that are not, not familiar with it mm -hmm. does she have any that accompany her because she feels others that are with her when she sleeps cuddling her <laughs> who is that <sighs> she thinks they're her spirit guides that have formed into huh, very loving, beautiful male partners that share her bed with her mm -hmm. in a non-sexual way, which is very significant, mm -hmm. but in a absolutely divinely loving and emotionally supportive way. You see, the amphibian creatures that we are, uh, we are we do not need to have sex. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have sex with ourselves, which is a, the most highest spiritual uh, shape-shifting uh, rite of passage. Mm. We don't use another for that. We have that ability within ourselves, and, and we can be different genders at different moments, depending mm -hmm. on our 
emotional state. So who is with her? Is it herself? It is uh, people, humans, that she has known. Mm. But may not have met in this lifetime. It's other souls walking on Earth that are also traveling in the astral mm -hmm. that she knows very, very deeply, even though she may not. She may have, but she may not have met them physically in this incarnation. Okay. She, it's a, one of them is a twin. Mm -hmm. Her twin that, she, that is a male that one is her neighbor. Mm -hmm. uh, one is one of us. Mm -hmm. To come give her companionship without breaking any laws. Mm -hmm. Now these people that have come to accompany her, these souls, can they be living in bodies now? Yes. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to. Okay. But they can. But they can. Mm. Okay. Do they know they're doing that? No. Okay. So it's just their astral body. Hmm. Okay, good. Now she's entering her second half of her life. And this shapeshifter has always been able to shift in whatever mm -hmm. direction. Why is it she not shifting now? She doesn't know what direction to go into. The integration that is happening for her now is so profound. The physical fact that in her physical body there is no longer the emotional vibration of panic mm -hmm. for the first time in her life. She is healing at a cellular level a lifetime. Lifetimes mm -hmm. of emotional attack. Mm. As a human being in this lifetime, this is the first time that in her body, and her body is her vessel that allows her to shapeshift. Mm -hmm. It is the first time that the energy of panic no longer is in her. It is, it is on its way out. Mm. If it's on its way out, why is it that she is feeling sometimes fear intensified when she thinks of tsunamis and things like that? What is going on with that? Residual, mm -hmm. like backlash, mm -hmm. backsplash. In lives she has lived on earth and in other places um, in human form human on earth and human on other planets mm -hmm. there have been history of being swept out to sea mm -hmm. by a tsunami which will parallel being swept into a vortex in the astral planes. All right. Is that what she's being sucked into, this vortex? Yeah, it's happening to everybody. It's happening to the whole planet. So is this void-like place, the vortex that we're talking about? Yeah. What happens when one travels into this vortex? What happens to your life? System shut down. Mm. The planet is being 
pulled through the fabric of this vortex and different people experience this diff at different times and not everybody experiences it but okay. or maybe everybody experiences it but not everybody's aware of it mm -hmm. she's made aware of it she wants to be aware of everything because she's a communicator she's a teacher she's a messenger she's always been a messenger she always tones pulses she always sends a pulse which is what she's doing to the other, to the ship. Yeah, mm -hmm. she does. That's She's a, a pulse sender. She's a toner. She's a, she mm -hmm. sends out pulses. So as she's sending out these pulses, is everything stopped for her? Because she's not getting the clients that she was before. She's kind of just stopped. Well, the pulsings happen forever. The stopping is because in her physical life right now, mm -hmm. in order for her to go through this portal, mm -hmm. you see, fear cannot go through the portal. Okay. Panic cannot go through the portal. So the portal is a cosmic towel that's wet. Hmm. and you're twisting it and as you're twisting it all the water comes out that's what's happening and all the water now maybe that was a wrong metaphor but the water is in this example the the fear mm -hmm. the panic all that stuff in human psychology and that has to be released. It has to be wrung out. Mm -hmm. And when you're being wrung out, there is, this is a prerequisite for entering the, the vortex. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to go through that vortex? It depends how much you resist. Uh, so if you just flow with it, allow things to go, you'll go through it quickly? Yes. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the fact that, for me, last month everything stopped. No emails, no correspondence, no activity. Is this the vortex we're talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's on the other side? Well, there are stages. It's ribbed. There okay. are stages to it. Mm -hmm. It's like a tunnel. Okay. The vortex turns into a tunnel that has different, uh, like, ribs. Mm -hmm. So as we get to another rib of this vortex, what mm. happens? Is there heightened activity once again? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do things shift as you're in that tunnel? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The more you get wrung out, mm -hmm. the more that you're in the tunnel you receive. Okay. What are we receiving from that tunnel? Yourself, your, your alignment, um your report card, mm. <laughs> your mission statement, yes. your companions, your your next launch. Mm -hmm. mm. So what is it that we need to know about today? What is her next launch? Is it still related to astrology and healing? Always, it will always be intertwined with astrology and healing. Mm -hmm. What about all of those that work that she's been doing, all that teaching on anatomy of healing? Is that part of it, or will that be changing? That will be changing. Mm -hmm. Why has that become stagnant in the form that she had it before? She's been beating the same drum. Mm -hmm. 
and she's recognized that she herself has changed. Mm -hmm. And so her drum beat has to change, as you were mentioning to her. Mm -hmm. The frequency of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. But she, what holds her back is that when she changes, she has the misbelief that she's changing because there's been a failure. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So she stays attached to not have a failure. Okay. She doesn't realize, though there's a part of her human, her humanness that doesn't realize how much she changes and, and how it, it doesn't have to be a failure. Mm -hmm. But to her, it is a failure. So it would be like a, a butterfly? Hmm. How it goes in one way and the chrysalis then changes its form? Yeah, Concept. she's very attached to being a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Why does she need to be a caterpillar all her life when she could fly? She already knows she could fly in formation. She's tired. Mm -hmm. And her heart has been wounded. Mm -hmm. Can we work on that wounded heart today? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So what I'd like to do is let's do a scan of her body and see where these wounds are. Where are we seeing the wounds, the shadows, the darkness, the pinching? Where is this? Between her lungs and her heart. All right. So let's take a look at that energy lodged in between her heart and her lungs. And let's see what that energy is. Is this an energy that she created? Or attached to her. It's an energy that she experienced. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's identify that energy. It's an energy that she has experienced and that she witnesses in human relationships. Mm -hmm. Why is it that she's keeping this lodged in there like a souvenir? Why does she like it so much? Well, in her history, when she has released it, it just comes back. Hmm. Let's find out what it's made out of. It's a fist. It's a fist. All right. So let's find it's out. It's the emperor's fist. Mm -hmm. Why does she have the emperor's fist lodged between her heart and her lungs? Why does she like having this fist there so much? She doesn't like it. <clears throat> Why does she keep it? It's her body. What's this fist doing for her? It was given to her. It was a gift. It uh -huh. was supposed to be a gift. All right. So let's find out who gave her the gift. The emperor. The emperor. And what was the emperor wanting to have that fist for? <sighs> to not forget him. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's find out if she needs that gift anymore. I'm going to count from three back to one. When we get to number one, let's go to that moment where that gift was given. Three, two, and one. Be there now. See the, see the emperor before you. He Tell looks barbaric. Mm -hmm. Looks barbaric with a lot of. It's like uh, one of those fists and and forearms that is in one of those metal. Those metal things that warriors go out with. Mm -hmm. An armor. And what do you look like there before the emperor? Ooh, a beautiful woman. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And what role do you play for this emperor? I am the apple of his eye. Mm -hmm. In his mind. In his mind. How do you feel about him? I don't like him. Mm -hmm. What has he done to you? He's tried to own me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd like for you now to address this mm. emperor and find out. It was a jewelry he gave me mm. to put around my neck. All right. Did you accept this jewelry? I had to. All right. And what happened after this body deteriorated? What happened to this gift? It was buried in my tomb. Mm -hmm. And what was attached to this? Oh, ownership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this a gift no. that you want to keep? No, it was never a gift. All right. You have free will. It's green. Mm -hmm. He got it when he went to Asia. Mm -hmm. What was attached to that? See it. A curse. Mm -hmm. But you see, there's a funny thing about gifts and accepting things. Mm. If you don't accept it, who does that gift belong to? My head would have been cut off. Mm -hmm. But your head still has deteriorated, hasn't it? Mm. So I want you to go back to that time once again. Mm. And I want you to bring out now your own strength. And I want you to tell the emperor how you feel about his gift and his curse. Speak to him. Bring out that warrior in you. I do not want your gift. I do not want you. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Emperor, what do you say back? <coughs> I am the emperor. You will do as I say. Take a deep breath in. What do you say back to the emperor? No, I do not accept your gift, nor do I accept you. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in. Emperor, what do you say back? I will mute you and cut your tongue out. And if you do that, Emperor, what does that do for you? You still won't have her. What is it that you really want, Emperor? What is it that you really want from her? I want her to look at me with love. Mm-hmm. Do you truly believe that by cutting her tongue and giving her a gift of ownership that she will love you? I do not want anyone else to have her. Mm. But you will never get that love. Tell me, Emperor, why is it that you're lacking so much love? I'm What's a fighter. We don't love. Mm. So if you're a fighter and you don't love, how do you expect to receive it back? Command it. That's not love. That's, that's how we command it. That's obedience. I understand. Obedience is not. Emperor, do you want to feel true love? You have that within you. Do you want me to show you where that love is hidden? Do you want to feel that love that you are asking of her? It's very simple. You had it hidden all along and you didn't know it was there. Emperor, there is a light in your heart that you have muted out. 
It's always been there. This is the light of Creator. This is the greatest love there is. Find that light within your heart now. <coughs> Yes, my mother had it for me. Uh -huh. Expand that light, Emperor. Feel that love once again. Feel it. Expand it even more. You say that warriors do not love, but you have love. Feel that love within you. This is the love you're looking for. Now look at this woman in her eyes, using that love. <coughs> she has the universe in her eyes. Mm -hmm. And you have the universe in your heart. She is just a reflection, a mirror to your heart now that you have that light. You don't need her love. You already have it. Expand it out, Emperor. <sighs> and now, she has something that she wants to return to you. She wants to give it back to you with love. Will you accept it back, knowing that you have now that love within you? The jade necklace, yes. Accept it. And with that love in your heart, will you now set her free? Yes. Very good. Take a deep breath in, and now, I'd like for you to address the Emperor, telling him, thanking him and forgiving him for not knowing any better. I understand that you didn't know any better and you were doing just what you knew to do. I release you in love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now I'd like for you to look at that inside your heart, and I'd like for you to give me all of that energy that you've been holding. Give me all that energy, and let's send it to the universe for healing. Remove all of that poison, and send it up to God. Let's remove that now. And now I'd like for you to detach yourself from that lifetime. Completely detach. And take a look at what's inside of your heart now. How does it look? <coughs> like a caterpillar going into the chrysalis. Beautiful. Very good. Take a scan of the rest of your body. And as you do that, we're going to fill that heart with beautiful light from source, healing it as this chrysalis forms into something that will be evolving and changing and coming out is something beautiful. Take a look at the rest of the body and see if there's anything else there that's holding you back. No, I don't see anything holding back. Very good. I do see the amphibian legs. Mm -hmm. Why is it that it's important to see those amphibian legs? She loves her amphibian legs. Mm -hmm. Describe <laughs> them for me. They're strong mm -hmm. and flexible, and they can walk and swim. 
and fly. So how is she going to use his amphibian legs now in this 3D life? How can she use that? She has a twin brother. Mm -hmm. It's his legs. Ah. Why is her twin brother's legs here? Because the rest of him can't be here and the rest of her can't be there. Okay. Is that affecting her in any way in this life? It's making her a little weird. Mm-hmm. This is something that they both chose. Yes. Okay. Is her brother able to help her in this 3D life? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because we understand that if she is reminded of her amphibious ways, she knows that she can fly, she can move forward. So how can we move her through this vortex to where she now knows her vision? She's a storyteller. Mm -hmm. With her words, she brings other realities to the vision of others here on Earth. Mm -hmm. This is why she's so good at astrology. Okay. She storytells and she brings other realities to life. Will she be using her storytelling more in different ways? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is the purpose now of all of these things that she has been studying in her life? The uh, Barbara Brenner School of Healing, the path work, the massage. That's all her past. All right. So what does she need to do with that now? Let it all go. Okay. What is her path now? To be some type of storyteller that storytelling and when she storytells mm -hmm. there's an incredible healing that happens in the cerebral cortex of the people listening mm -hmm. you see because the amphibian planets they they hum mm. they tone okay and as they tone visions crystallize and she has this gift this is why she has the incision on her neck right now because there was an implant there that was inhibiting that had to be removed. Has she had other implants removed with the via the cancer? Yes, and for forehead f several years ago she had a skin melanoma that uh, was removed. She's been under a lot of attack. Mm -hmm. Is this how the implants were going to be taken out? Correct. Via the cancer? Correct. So is the, are the cancer cells actually pushing them out? Correct. Ah. They're pushing them out into physical reality so the surgeon can cut them out. Very good. So they're helping. Yes. Mm -hmm. And would you tell her what her tattoos mean? What's they're part of her shape-shifting skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, her amphibian heritage... Their skin glistens and changes color mm -hmm. and self-illuminates. And tattooing her body with spiritual scripture was the best way she could embody that ability here on Earth. Mm -hmm. Anything else about them? They are prayers of protection. Okay. Do they help? They do. Very good. Now, she did have the abdu abductions in Mexico when she was taken on the ship. Can you tell me more about that? Go ahead and be there. I'm going to count from five back to one. When I get to number one, you will see that mm. very clearly. Five, making it clearer and clearer. Four, three, two, and one. Clearing it out. 
the part of the ship she was on was a receiving room, which it was a pretty large room. There were hundreds of people up there. They visit here often. And there are different types of amphibians around the, the galaxies. And uh, the um, the blue people, the blue beings, they're they are of long, sinewy, um, humanoid form, uh, not quite as dense as physical form, and they are the guardians of this mothership. Mm -hmm. What do they look like besides being blue? Well, they they are of blue hues. They're blues. Uh, turquoise, violets, and pinks, and greens, and they will uh, communicate by shifting their color. Hmm. This is how they communicate with one another. Okay. The color is a little different. Is it like a language to them? It's an emotional language, yes. Mm -hmm. This is their form of communication is, is telepathic, and the way they express their emotions is by looking at the color that they're emanating and the fluidity of their body. And do they look human? They have humanoid shape, but they're not human. Okay. They have a head and four appendages and a torso. Their appendages are a lot longer than humans. Okay. And they are in command of the ship? They're the guardians of the ship. Okay. Uh, they monitor uh, the pressure of the torus field that is generating the orbs of light that come to the suns, mm -hmm. the suns in the solar systems, of the solar systems. Um, they're orchest they orchestrate the flying formation of the orbs out of the mothership and to the different solar systems and their suns. Mm -hmm. So were they doing anything with our sun? Yes. What were they doing with our sun? Collecting data. <clears throat> what did the data look like? How are we doing? Hmm. Well, on track. Mm -hmm. The sun is you think the earth is a big classroom. The sun is a humongous meeting area. Mm -mm. Who meets in the sun? Everyone. Everyone that has permission. Can you tell me more about this sun? It is an ancient, ancient, ancient soul. You cannot understand with the human mind what is happening in the sun. There is no thinking. There is no polarity. There are no words. Imagine the sun. Imagine the intensity of the sun spread throughout eternity. There is no breath, there is no life, there is no death. It is all sunlight, it is gold, white,
with waves of patterns. Like you see, wind has, if you could see wind, you would see the patterns of the wind in the molecules of the air. Mm -hmm. It is like the cosmic ocean that is the sun. It is a portal. It is connected to all the suns. All the suns are connected. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think of the sun, we think of heat. No. There is no heat, there is no coldness, there is no breath, there is no life, there is no death. Mm -hmm. It is a continuous matrix of a wind mm -hmm. wave that is gold and white. It is highly intelligent. Mm. So when we receive the light, the sun, are we receiving? something from it? Yes. This is how you remember. If the, si if the sunlight can reach your pineal gland through your eyes and your skin, then that eternal sun wave can move through your spine and into your DNA. Hmm. Is that why we have been yes. wearing sunglasses and sunscreen to yes. keep us from that information? Yes, mm. and the chemtrails to deflect the light away. Mm -hmm. What is it that they're so afraid of? Us. Mm. What happens when our DNA is changed by the sun? We're freed mm. from we're free to go back to the sun hmm. for eternity. And eternity is a split second. Mm -hmm. So we're held captive here by not being able to access that information. Is that it? Uh, we can access the information, but we're, we're accessing it at such a low percentage. Mm -hmm. At a very low frequency. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So what would be the best suggestion for those wanting to access the sun? See it in your mind's eye. Close your eyes. And see it every day. in your mind screens and vision. This is, this is her work. She uses her vocal cords to create the images to, for people to see. So even if uh, someone is not in the sun, if they imagine it? The practice is to close their eyes and envision the golden light in your mind screen and then seeing yourself in all of creation riding and flying the wave of the sun through eternity which is also a split second the visual exercise of doing this 
regularly will activate your internal sun. Mm. You see yourself flying through and into the sun, which turns into an eternal landscape. And you catch the sun's wave, the, the sun's wind. Mm. You catch the internal wind, the breeze of the sun, inside the sun. And you allow your internal mind screen to be that. And your pineal gland will remember. And once we remember that, what does that eternal sun inside of us, what will that do for us? Bring us back to our innocence. Mm. Is this the work she was told that she needs to do? Yes. She needs to teach this. Yes. Mm -hmm. She needs to help people come back to the sun. So this is the life work she needs to do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through her voice, through meditation, mm -hmm. through hypnosis, through whatever. Mm -hmm. That's why she has been stopped and blocked and put inside a chrysalis. Yes. She needs to do this work. She needs to understand the importance of pre-puberty innocence mm -hmm. in the DNA of adults mm -hmm. and how to help adults, adults, come back to this together. Mm -hmm. Because this is the same energy that the formation of the amphibians use to pulsate the ship. Mm -hmm. And this is what humanity can use to pulsate itself right back into the sun. Beautiful. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So this oh. is what she's been holding space for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Will she be staying in the United States to do this, or will she be going to Mexico? What's the best oh, place? Oh, Mexico. Mm -hmm. They are the land of the sun. Mm -hmm. They have some karma with the sun. The Mayans, the Aztec. Mm -hmm as all do cultures all over the universe and galaxies. <laughs> mm -hmm. But there is very powerful energy for her in Mexico. This is where she was abducted. Mm -hmm. It's not abduction, that's the wrong word. This is where she went to go be informed. Mm -hmm. Is this that why she was allowed to see this scientist sending these orbs into the sun? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was kind of pre-planned? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. And they collect the data from the orbs that go to the sun. The, the communication is a two-way form of communication. Mm -hmm. And so they un they track us by tracking our relationship to the sun. Okay. So when we talk about our high vibration, is the vibration the actual connection with the sun? Yes. Mm. The breeze, the the it's not the sun as we see it is like round or flat. This is an eternal landscape that is in a constant breeze or wave that is the frequency of the sun for eternity. Mm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, how does the sun relate to Gaia, to Earth? Is there a connection? He loves her. Mm -hmm. He's always loved her. Oh, they are lovers. 
Is there anything that you would like to say about that connection? He is waiting for her. He is waiting for her to go through her transformation that he is assisting her in. Okay. Is she also going through this vortex? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's being pulled by the sun through a magnetic fabric. Mm -hmm. And as she's like the marble that's being pulled through the fabric, and as her weight catapults through the fabric, all of creation is going through that with her mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, the beings and things are not happy they don't want to go through the portal they want to stay as they are mm -hmm. what happens when we get to the other side we're in the sun okay we're in the land of the sun this is where the higher octave uh, the higher octave civilizations live. Mm -hmm. Is it the same shape or form than we have here on Earth now? In physical form? Mm -hmm. What kind of form is there on the other side? There is no physical form. Okay. There is expression. Mm hmm But it's, you have, it goes in stages. So physical humans are physically dense. Amphibians begin to be shapeshifters and, and mm -hmm. gender shifters. Mm -hmm. They start to illuminate their own light on their skin. Then you move into the, um, the guardians of the Taurus field that are still in human form. They're humanoid, but not physical density. Mm -hmm and they express themselves by their luminescent radiance and how that changes and then the next tier the tiers keep moving up into light orbs and and light clouds of light clouds of color that move and change and elongate or or thicken or wisp or become crystalline or become gas or become arrows or streaks. Now we've heard that the earth is going to be changing into a new earth. Is this what we're talking about? Hmm. Or is this something else? It's something else. Mm -hmm. It's something else that is aware of what the earth is going through. Mm -hmm. The earth herself, it's it, the earth herself, you could say, is also needing to go back to pre puberty. Mm -hmm. We need to go back, we need to go forward to go back. So, when we say go back, there's never a going back. Mm -hmm. We need to move forward, we need to expand out and revalue innocence so are we talking about the innocence of the planet we're talking about the innocence of creation mm -hmm. yes the planet is the planet changing its form in a different type of dimension or place how is that happening moving forward to be to regain this innocence <sighs> She is innocent. We aren't. Ah. So what happens to the earth is a beautiful mirror mm -hmm. of the degree of our lack of innocence. As we rescind our perversions, mm -hmm. our abuse, her reflection will match that. Okay. 
And that is the new earth. So that is why so many are here now with different frequency, more connected mm -hmm. to change this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she is a magician. Mm. She is a mirror. She has made a soul contract to be the place where we meet our darkness okay. through her, mm -hmm. by our action, through our action. As soon as we revalue the lack of our perversions and abuses, she will mirror that back to us. Beautiful. And that is the new earth. Okay. That makes sense. And the sun is helping her by acceleration. Electromagnetic. He has been sending souls here. All the souls here. Are these new souls that are coming yes. here? These innocent souls? Yes. Mm -hmm. These are the young kids that are not... They call themselves asexual. They wonder why they're asexual. Not that there's anything wrong with human sexuality, but we have perverted its purpose. That was part of the Archon and Draconian. Hmm. In our opinion, amphibian Sexuality is the, the highest in terms of spiritual alignment. Okay. Now you had mentioned again the Draconians. What do we need to know? They love perversion. Mm -hmm. They love abuse. So if people find themselves in perverted, abusive adult relationships of one way or another, it is... a uh, lesser vibrational influence mm -hmm. that will keep you away from achieving access to the sun. Okay. So we need to find our way out of that on our own. Find your way by reconnecting to the innocence within. Wonderful. Pre-puberty. Mm -hmm. Now, was there any type of timeline shift this past summer? Did anything happen? This is when, she, for her or for the planet? For her either. We're talking about her now. <sighs> yes. This is when she accepted, without realizing it, her role. Mm-hmm. And what kind of a timeline is she on now? She's on a solar timeline. Okay. And that is her lover. Okay. So can you show her an idea of what she should be doing now? Now that she is a lover of the soul. <sighs> She's going to help speak his language. Okay. Through soundtracks, what you call soundtracks, meditation soundtracks mm -hmm. that are going to be guarded by the guardians of the Taurus field. Hmm. Is this something that she's going to broadcast? Yes. Out? Does she need to go to school for this? She doesn't need to go to school for anything. Okay. But she will be doing more broadcasting. She will be doing more broadcasting. She can go to school if she wants to. Uh huh. But she will find herself disappointed. Okay. She already knows this stuff. Not that she knows the technical side. That the, the school will teach her many third dimensional things. We will help her connect to sound engineers that are already in the field that would be more than happy to collaborate with her on these projects. Okay, good, good. And She doesn't need to do it all by herself. She can 
delegate it. Share. Share it. She told me that she tasted death. Mm. Why is that? <sighs> because death is inevitable. Mm -hmm. And... It was the death of the prior timeline. Mm -hmm. All right. She has died in a certain reality. Mm -hmm. She has ceased to exist. So who is this one that's here before me? Is this a new and improved version? This is the one that has always been. Mm -hmm. This is who she was when she was 12 years old. Okay. Before before she was susceptible to attacks mm -hmm. in this physical life. You see she was under the radar. Mhm. Mm until she was 12. Who had her under the radar? She was protected. Okay. You I... see, in human development, sexuality, because it is not protected by spirituality in human development. You see, look at your media. There is perversion of sexuality everywhere, and it's, it is accepted. Look at your the pedophilia rings. Look at the... Was at a soul level an agreement. She's always had an agreement to expose darkness. sexuality, the rape. We know why little boys and little girls are raped and it is the most vile form of soul assault. Human sexuality was meant to be the most sacred union of soul. This has been under attack by the Dracos, the Draconians, who think they are lords of the universes and the galaxies and of worlds, but they are not. They never have been. Everything that they create is an illusion of darkness. Unfortunately, they're very good at what they do, at lying and conceiving of lies and infiltrating these lies into the mass media markets. And unfortunately, humans have been gullible and have lost their innocence and are therefore susceptible to the invasion. So what now? People are going to be wrung out and awakened and shaken. Mm -hmm. There have been so many signs and so many signals and so many opportunities for humanity to turn around. And humanity will turn around, but it's going to come now with a jolt mm. in each individual life. It is not necessarily a mass jolt. Mm -hmm. It is not about fear. It, it is about internal 
when the desire inside is so strong to awaken, to no longer feel pain, to no longer need to numb out, to no longer need to escape, to no longer need to lie. When the desire inside one human being is so strong to no longer live this draconian lie, that person will awaken with a jolt. There is no mass event that's going to come and shake the earth into destruction. No. Yes, things are happening. Yes, climate is changing. That is because the sun is ramping it up. As the sun ramps up its energy, that continuous eternal landscape that is the sun's breath becomes the reality here. Many wonder if there's going to be earthquakes. There are. Tsunamis. There are. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's going to be. There are. Mm -hmm. There are earthquakes and tsunamis right now. It is happening. Will there be more? Yes. To the same degree that it is happening now. All right. There is no meteor that is going to hit the earth. There is no... There is no nuclear weapon that is going to be permitted. All right. That we guarantee you. Is someone helping with that? Absolutely. Okay. So from those that are watching and protecting the earth, what message do you have for humanity? Look at the sun. Because the landscape that is the eternity of the breath of the sun is going to come upon the earth. And lies and distortion of truth and absurdity and abuse and, uh, and vileness will be squashed by the frequency of the sun permeating human consciousness and the planet it's beautiful thank you now i'd like to ask why was magali brought here she wanted to meet you <laughs> and we wanted her message to get onto your channel beautiful is there anything else that i could have asked that i didn't that you would like to say at this time No. Very good. Thank you very much for your assistance here today. We thank you. Are we complete? Yes, we are. Thank you very much. <sighs> wow. How does that feel? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Let's switch up those stones. Oh. Wow. Oh. <clears throat> what a journey. Oh, oh I love my amphibian family. <laughs> How did you feel? Amazing. Now you understand? Mm -hmm. Does everything make sense? Mm hmm. Wow. So much information. Oh my goodness. Wow. How long do you think this journey was? <laughs> like to you? 45 minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, we're close to, we're now 157. One hour and 57 minutes. Close wow. to two hours. Amazing. Oh, I love those amphibians. Oh, oh my God, they're so amazing. Now do you see how everything was just perfect? Yeah. Everything was 
was explained. You went on that ship just to eavesdrop, <laughs> just to get information. That to sounds tell, just to like tell me. World, right? <laughs> 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 Unbelievable. So, is this something you want to share? Yeah. It seems to be a. It's the purpose. Your mouthpiece for this information. Absolutely. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I made it. You I'm made here it. with you. Yes. Yes. On this side of the camera. Wow. What a session. Did you expect anything like this? No. What did you expect? Um, I expected to like, you know, be talking to myself. <laughs> 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 like, you know, reciting kind of the things that I have going on in my life and in my head. Yes. And up, I had, I had no, uh, the visuals were so clear. Wow. Um, the connection to the, you know, that amphibian. Mm hmm. Wow. So much love and, uh, it, it all makes sense, you know? Now you have had other hypnosis sessions. Mm -hmm. What was the difference between those and this one? <laughs> Quantum. <laughs> it's it, this is a whole other per, permissibility. Is that even a word? Like allowing? Yes. Uh -huh. it, it's a. I, I can't describe it. I can't even describe what just happened. <laughs> but I traveled and I saw it and yeah. I felt it and it was there and my mouth was just moving and these things were coming out of my mouth. and But it was me and it wasn't me. So were you listening to yourself talk? Is that what it felt yeah. like? Yeah. So you were kind of like on the sidelines listening? Yeah. Uh-huh. But I was also experiencing it. Like I was experiencing it. It was happening. Yeah. I was experiencing it and I was witnessing it. And we were getting a lot of information that was kind of brand new about the sun. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. The, yeah, the importance of the sun. And how we, we shouldn't be wearing sunglasses. We shouldn't be wearing sunscreen. We should be out in the sun. This is really, really important. And when I met you today, that's what I was doing. I was mm -hmm. out there trying to get my piece of the sun. Yeah. Wow. And it's, uh, so the message about the, the sun meditation and the yes. sun language, that was coming from the civilizations that live in the sun. Wow. Like, mm hmm that's how you get there. So they were giving instructions on how to, you know, see that light. Yes. And focus on that light. So your pineal gland can get bathed in this image, this internal image of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that will, that will move into your spinal cord and into your DNA and the squeezing happens and all the, the excess stuff comes out. Mm -hmm. And then I also found the, uh, the information. And so that's, that's the other side of the, the sexuality, like sexuality is so important. Yes. And now we understand why it's being misused. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's something that each and every single person in their own lives can, has control. We have right. control over our sexuality. And, and, you know, many, many years ago, I stopped watching TV. I stopped going to the movies because every single movie that's out there has sexuality, has violence to it. Mm -hmm. And I made a choice. I'm not going to be part of that. And it right. has really changed my life. Wow. You know, the fact that I have just made a choice not to be part of that. Mm -hmm. So imagine your kids, what they're being raised under. They're, they're, they need that innocence and you need that innocence back. Yeah, we all do. That's, mm -hmm. that's the ticket. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not going to be innocence up here. It's going to be innocence all the way through. Your whole soul. Yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, we, I was learning so much today. It was amazing. It was just like, I can't wow. wait to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Cause you, I want to know what I said. <laughs> Cause you were only 45 minutes. <laughs> right. And it got so hot when mm -hmm. I was in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, when I was, uh, in the amphibian place. Yeah. 
and there was one point where, where I was talking about what they do with their body. Yes. How they can morph the different sexes and their skin is scaly and mm. like kind of like your shirt, you know, like it's different, like blues mm -hmm. and greens and purples and What violets. a coincidence that I'm wearing <laughs> amphibian colors. <laughs> and and they, uh, it, it shines, it yes. shines its light and they're just like so wow. like... Wow. Precious and another, powerful. Another thing that happened was this thing with the emperor. Oh, the emperor's wow. fist. Remember that? Yeah. How does your body feel after this? Good. Yeah, I get these like panic attacks sometimes where I can't take a full enough breath, and it might last for like a week. How does it? How does your breath feel now? Great. Wow. Great. What a session. Yeah. So tell everybody who you are, what you do, uh -huh. and how they can get a hold of you. Right. Thank you. So I go by Mama Maga, <laughs> and uh, I have my YouTube channel where I talk about the astrology and how to move from 3D to 5D. Uh, mm -hmm. So you might want to check out my Saturday night live webinars on YouTube, uh, Mama Maga Astrology. And uh, this is the work that I've been doing for 25 years is to help one way or another bring people into this awakening, this mm -hmm. awareness, this higher self by uh, relinquishing the addiction we have to the shadow. And is there something that people can do with you? Do you work with oh, people yeah. one-on-one? -on -one? How Absolutely. do they get a hold of you? Well, you can get a hold of me through my website, maga-astrology.com. You'll see the phone number there at the bottom or send me an email. I do intuitive healings as well as um, astrology. And then I also offer the Mama Maga two-day intensive for those courageous souls where I actually travel to you and your tribe and we do a two-day intensive together at your location. Wow. That's exciting. That sounds exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you'll take advantage of, of one of these services. This is not something I'm getting paid for or anything. Whenever somebody comes here and they have really cool stuff, I like to mm -hmm. tell everybody about it. And I hope I get to meet you sometime, just like I met this beautiful woman here mm -hmm. next to me. Um, just, wonderful. Just go to my website. Sign up for my newsletter. You'll see it under hypnosis and the newsletter. That's the only way to get an appointment with me. That's how you got one. Yeah. And uh, once that newsletter goes out, you got to click on that link fast. It'll open up a calendar and it will tell you when the next sessions are. They run out like within minutes. So don't tell me you, you opened it up an hour ago and there's nothing there. <laughs> within minutes, they're gone. So you got to be really fast. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, session. Wow, it was powerful. And I hope I get to meet you. Thank you. <laughs>